Hey, how's it going? YouTube, I'm back from the video, and today I'm talking about how the Brooklyn Nets have completed one of the most successful rebuilds in NBA history. Now, what I'm be getting into this is like how they were able to completely revive their team from that awful trade they made. What I'm be getting to for this video is going to be like pretty much where how like they ended up even being as bad as they were, then how they managed to work their way up, really build themselves back up, and get themselves all the way back to the top, or not to the top, but like are definitely trending in an upward uh, position and are being are currently a playoff team so i'm beginning to all that in this video so without further ado without rhyming on too much let's get right into this video all right so before i really get into what they had like how they rebuilt the team how they were able to get it back up i'm going to be getting into what started it why are they even as bad as they were well it really comes from one trade where they traded keith burson's marshawn brooks chris humphreys chris joseph gerald wallace and a 2014 first round pick which ended up being james young a 2016 first round pick which ended up being Jalen brown and a 2017 first round pick which ended up being the number one overall pick in that draft and for a 37-year-old Kevin Garnett, 36-year-old Paul Pierce, and 36-year-old Jason Terry. So basically what they traded away was some very nice young players at the time to go along with James Young, who's a bust, actually didn't lose much, but then Jalen Brown and Markel Fultz. Now, yes, Markel Fultz is also, you could consider a bust, but he hasn't been healthy enough, but still, they pretty much considerably, looking at what they gave up, they gave up a number one overall pick in Jalen Brown, who's a absolute beast right now, is one of the better players and better young players in the league, for a nothing but a whole bunch of washed up old guys that really didn't help them do much at all and what resulted from this trade was many years of them being very bad and not being able to do anything about it because they didn't have any more picks to really help the team get better anyway so i mean without those picks it was very hard for them to rebuild and that's why they were so bad for so long but like it's literally been like a year since the um trade like all the effects really wore off like they're finally getting their first round pick this year and it's really only been a year and they've already built this team up to a playoff contender and they're probably going to make the playoffs this year as they are currently the sixth seed in the East right now. So, I mean, they have done very, very good. But now, before I get into how good they are this year and how, how they were able to do it, I'm be going starting right from the beginning, the offseason right after they made the trade, the 2014 offseason. Now, they didn't do much, but what they did do was um, trade for Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Now, if you don't know who Rondé Hollis Jefferson or follow the Brooklyn Nets very hard, I don't actually, but I did do research and I saw that Rondé Hollis Jefferson was actually a very big piece of this team, at least up until all the way this year and I mean that trade was actually pretty significant as they also got cash in the trade and they didn't give up very much and Ronda House Jefferson ended up being a very nice player for the team in the future years to come and was a very nice role player for them at all times and now in 2015 they actually locked up Ronda Hellas Jefferson to a multi-year contract to really keep him on the team and he was just all around like a really good sixth seventh eighth man at all times for the Brooklyn Nets but a huge signing that they were able to do is sign Brooke Lopez who was actually actually became an absolute star for them and he was a very very nice player for them but I actually put a, that signing on here for a different reason that will be getting to in a little bit farther down in the video but yes I, for as of right now when they si signed him in 2015 Brook Lopez served as a very very good player for them but now my next reason and my next thing is going to be that they waived Darren Williams and now what this did was they really officially started the rebuild because at the times Darren Williams was still looked at to be one of the more elite players in the league and an all-star level player but they waived him because they said you know what we want to start fresh we want to have a nice rebuild we want to be bad so we our picks can be good and yes they didn't have their picks but they still like they just wanted a fresh start and that's why they waived Aaron Williams so basically in the first two off seasons after the trade they really just um wanted to trade away some big money get money back get like more cap space and really just um get a nice role player which was Rondé and they also did sign a star in that so yeah they really pretty much in the first two years they spent the first two years after the trade getting a fresh start and getting some solid good players but now in the 2016 offseason this is really where um things really started picking up for them as in 2016 they were able to lock up Karis Levert to a multi-year contract as well and Karis Levert once again if you don't follow the Brooklyn Nets you wouldn't know how good he is for them but he is one of those role players that every team has that's very good but it's very underrated and Karis Levert is that he's a very good 3 and D player and he's just a very nice energy player to have he can start come off the bench he pretty much does everything and another person they signed was Joe Harris who literally no one knew about until a recent all-star break where he won the three-point contest and he has 
necessarily to be a very good bench player or even starting level player for them depending who they play and I mean when the dude's open he's like he's obviously a dead eye shooter so you have to respect his shot and come out on him when he is on the court and he really helps spread the court and another big signing they actually did was a pretty underrated signing in my opinion they were able to sign Spencer Dinwiddie who has been one of the best bench players if not the best bench player in the entire league as he did win six man of the year just last year and he's just been a huge piece of this team and Spencer Dinwiddie is pretty much a starting level point guard on almost every single team except for like a, a select few but for most teams he would be their starting point guard and to have him coming off their bench is a is very very big for someone like the Brooklyn Nets now yes they were able to sign some very nice players in 2016 offseason but they also drafted and made some good trades they actually were able to draft jared allen and kyle kuzma now if they would have just kept both of them that would have been a very very good rookie class especially depending on where they drafted from but instead they decided to keep jared allen and trade kyle kuzma and some of y'all might just be like well kyle kuzma is really good so that must have been a mistake to trade him but when you really look at it the trade actually helped the brooklyn nets more than it helped the los angeles lakers even though you would think that just from hindsight and knowing the bigger name because Jared Allen, he, in my opinion, he could be a future all-star. He's already an elite rim protector, and if he can get a jump shot or just a little bit more scoring, the dude's going to be an absolute beast as he's extremely athletic and very good at rim protecting, and I really just like him overall, and I liked him out of the draft, and he's really helped a lot. And now, but y'all might, well, why wouldn't they keep Kyle Kuzma? How can that not be a good thing? Well, he was a big, big part in the trade for D'Angelo Russell as they traded Kyle Kuzma and um, Burke Lopez for D'Angelo Russell and Timothy Mozgov. And now, yes, Kuzma has been great for the Lakers don't get me wrong but no one can argue that D'Angelo Russell is not a better player D'Angelo Russell this year is averaging 20 points per game and has developed into an all-star and the player that everyone thought he would be out of the draft now yes Kuzma might develop into a future all-star as well but as of right now the Lakers are not in the playoffs and for the past few years have not been in the playoffs and the Brooklyn Nets are currently in the playoffs so that was a very good trade in 2016 offseason was a huge huge year for their rebuild as they locked up three very huge pieces for their team and they also made a very big trade for someone that would feed, that now lead their team to the playoffs and really lead them to most of their success this year in D'Angelo Russell. But now that we talked about all the off seasons and how they got in here and really how the rebuild has been very big throughout the year and how they've actually rebuilt the team to the current point it is, we have to get into the current day. Where are they currently at? Well, they went from one of the worst teams being a horrible laughing stock Cleveland Browns type bad team to being the seventh seed right now in the entire East and they're only half half a game away from the sixth seed. Well, actually, that was, as of right now, they're the sixth seed, and they, they if they play extremely well, could get the fifth seed, but they will most likely end the sixth or seventh seed, but they're in the playoffs. No one would have expected that. I mean, the this team has made a huge, huge leaps and bounds in rebuilding this team, especially after the horrible Billy King trade, which they made, which gave them very little draft picks to choose from, and the draft picks that they did have were high first rounders, and they made the most out of all of them and really just help you out at the rebuild as you can really see in the past and the 2015 and 16 off seasons really are two biggest ones as in 17 they didn't do much in 14 they were just really like kind of like seeing what they could get out of trades and stuff and really help relieve space and like really rebuild the team so they spent 2015 like it was crazy how underrated and under the radar this re rebuild was none of us saw it coming D'Angelo Russell developed very nicely Jared Allen's very good I mean they just made good move after good move after good move and this was about even signing anyone to really a bad contract at all so I mean, you really have to give the props up to the Brooklyn Nets. But unfortunately, guys, this is move for this video, so comment below. Do you agree with me? Do you think the Brooklyn Nets made a very good rebuild? Do you think they're not? I want to hear all your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you did like the point, like button, and subscribe button, that would mean the world to me. Uh, before I go, I have to give all praise to God. As y'all been showing tons of support, and I cannot thank y'all enough. But God's the reason I'm here. He's blessed me, put me in this position to really help spread his name do what i love to do and i'm just so blessed to be here and i'm so blessed to make these videos every other day for you guys and i just cannot explain how blessed i am and just how thankful i am for him keeping everybody around me safe me safe all you safe and hope he keeps y'all safe as well i'm just i'm so blessed to be here and i cannot thank y'all for all support either so all glory to god thank you for all support hope you have a blessed day could i have a blessed day so you need to have a blessed day see you in tomorrow's video goodbye boo blah, blah, blah.